Hello everybody and welcome back to Insane Brit Gaming. I'm the Insane Brit and uh, this vlog is a random vlog that I'm doing. I had no intention of making a vlog like this. Um, but I have to make, I have to say something on it. Um, you know, normally I do these in my FIFA simulations. Uh, I, I talk about, about it a little bit, but I've got to say, uh, I had to jump right on it just to get my initial opinions on it and get a full sentiment of where I'm feeling and what's happening at Chelsea Football Club right now. Um, today's game. Uh, where all began, or it's been building for a couple of weeks, but let's talk about the Arsenal game specifically, where it's kind of come to a head now at this particular point in time when it's out there. Uh, but Chelsea aren't doing very well, of course, and we lost against Arsenal 2-0 in a very, very poor performance. I just fresh off watching the game, didn't even look like scoring. Arsenal were a better, were the better team. They were more up for it. They wanted it. They battled for the for everything, and Chelsea were just lackluster. Um, and it's for a number of reasons, of course. And then we'll talk about Surrey's uh, talking points at the ending of the uh, end of the, uh, the game or whatever in a little bit. But uh, initially, uh, what did I think was wrong with today's game? Well, for, for, quite frankly, there's a number of things. Um, so it is going to be this is like a ra uh, rambling video, so I'm going to bounce all over the place. Um, <clears throat> so Kepa's pretty good, solid, whatever. Uh, the back four, Louise is good in with his passing and everything. Alonso played particularly well today. The problem for me is in the midfield, primarily. Uh, and we've had uh, Jermaine Genius talk about this. We've had uh, Martin Keogh, I believe, of the former Ar Arsenal player. I think he was a defender, I'm not too sure. And we've had Rio Fernand, as well as all the rest of the fans on social media, saying... Why are you not playing Kante in his preferred position in that uh, holding midfield? And that's where he is one of the best midfielders in the world, winning two back-to-back -back Premier League titles in two years plus a World Cup. You cannot fault uh, his uh, acronym there. He is literally the best in that position, minus Makaleli, uh, who, who uh, well, the Makaleli role was what they called it. Uh, he perfected that role, and Kante today is that man is the most effective at getting the ball back winning it back the man's got an engine can run for days it's insane and he isn't being played in that preferred position when questioned sorry over this uh, he stated because that's where he wanted Kante to play on the right side instead of a holding midfield role where he believes that Jorginho Jesus Christ who is his golden boy uh, who can play in Italian football and he can ping the ball around uh, left, right and centre. But then it goes, the ball goes through him pretty much like Carrick uh, when he played at Tottenham and Manchester United when he started to run the game. Of course, when you discover this, people run on that, to that particular player and surround him and then there you go. The, the, the game's up essentially. Um, and that's why, he, that's why he prefers Jorginho in there, but he isn't physical enough. He, he gets barged off the ball. The man needs to go into a weight training room and get physical because he just gets barged off the ball. He's, a, he's not effective. Uh, he's surrounded and he's just out of the game. He's effectively not even there. On the left side, you've got Kovacovic there, who's good with the ball technically, uh, runs with the ball, good with his feet, uh, blah, blah. He's a good, solid player. Barkley might be a little bit more physical, uh, so maybe you can play him there as well, and he kind of rotates between the two of them. But everybody is calling for Kante to, to return to his preferred position. And that still isn't the case. I hope and pray to God that he does in the next game, which I think is Tottenham. But I don't know. It seems to be an act of stubbornness more than anything else. Eden Hazard was null tonight. He got surrounded and was playing that number false number nine role, uh, which doesn't make sense because Giroud is actually fit and able to play. Um, <clears throat> and Moretta has been left out of the last two squads, which doesn't make sense. Um... So that's kind of frustrating. Uh, I think there's an underlying thing going on there as well. There's rumours he might be going to Atletico Madrid, which, uh, see, like I said, I want to talk about a range of things and it's going to seep down into what I actually think is going on here. So if you look at Moretta, not go, if you look at that positioning, so you say, oh, Kante's not playing his preferred position and people can't understand that. The players around the, 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 the training can't understand it and I well, don't get it. But okay, that's your choice. Let's move on. But then you go to the, uh, the number nine role, which has it isn't comfortable playing there. He prefers to go on the left and even said he enjoys playing with Giroud, who holds the ball up well. And Giroud's fit and he's still not playing. With Moretta being left out of the team, your number one striker, or should be, which you pay £75 million pound for, or £70 million pound for, he isn't playing in the team. Maybe he wants to move. Maybe he isn't doing enough to score goals. And as a manager, you isolate Moretta and say, now, this has always been my opinion, but there are effects to this. If a player is not playing well, leave them out. Let them think about it. Look in the mirror and say, you ain't playing well for a reason. Therefore, you're not playing. But upon that, you've got loyalties in the dressing room, especially if you really like that player or person. You're like, well, the manager's the manager, but I really like this guy and uh, we have a lot of fun. We're friends, whatever. And he ain't playing, so that's kind of bumming me out a little bit as a player on that pitch. So Moretta isn't playing. So that could be seeping into the uh, dressing room. 
uh, amongst players and it's kind of affecting them then you take Giroud who's supposed to take his spot and he still isn't playing and so it's really sleeping in like why aren't Giroud playing why aren't Giroud playing he may not be fit and then he is fit he's good enough to play parts of the game but maybe he's just not not fit enough maybe but then after that effect you've got Hazard playing a role he doesn't want to play he wants to play on that left wing so now you've got three players all pissy one out the team one on the bench and he's like I should be playing and one out of position along with Kante out of position they ain't happy and it's seeping through the entirety of the team and that effect is just just making us ineffective. We're trying to pass the ball around and, and hold possession but we've got no impact up front. Um, even if you bring a player um, like Huguin in on loan or, or permanent or whatever it may be um, I don't think that's going to solve the underlying problems overall because we, that positioning in the midfield is still pretty crap. Jorginho needs to get in the gym and get a little bit, get a bit of bulk on him or something. He might be better off in the Italian league or the Spanish league, but the Premier League, or maybe it just ain't his year this year, and he has to effectively wait a year, and then next year we'll see him uh, better off. You know what I mean? Like more adapted to the Premier League. That could be the case. But having said that, as a player who who is uh, who controls the game, what's supposed to be going through him in that midfield, pinging the ball around, what he did at Napoli. Um, if they spot you and say that's what they're doing, and we isolate him, the game's up. You have to take him off. There isn't a plan B. Kante is basically ineffective on that right side. Don't know what he's doing. He disappears for ninety percent of the game. I think I heard his name twice, and it wasn't him winning the ball back. It was him coming forward once or doing a little bit of a dribble, but then he lost it. And it's like, phew, you peed it out, mate. You're nowhere. Uh, I, don't, I don't effectively blame the players uh, if they're playing in the wrong positions. Um, I blame the manager more than anything. Uh, just the wrong tactics are being applied here. The way we're playing football is good, but we've got nothing up front. And when we've got a striker available, even in Giroud, who might not be the preferred number one, you should play him. He has an impact. He holds the ball up, brings people into play. And um, it's just, it's absolutely dire. So that basically has been sleeping over the past couple of weeks. Now, uh, the, the after the match comments. Um, sorry, I've got to be honest with you. You ain't going to win this one. And no manager has, especially with Chelsea Football Club. And that is uh, blaming the players. Clearly, everybody's talking about your tactics. And uh, everybody. I mean, everyone. The fans, uh, pundits and everything are saying he's doing it wrong. X, Y, and Z. Just on the positioning of the players out of whack. Blaming the players, he's looking for a reaction for them uh, against the Tottenham game, which is the second game in the uh, Cup. Uh, I don't know if you're going to get that reaction that you want. It's a big risk playing that uh, playing that card of, oh, it's all their fault, because it kind of isn't. Uh, you've got to be uh, some responsibility in there at the same time. Rather, and rather criticising them on the side, and then, uh, you know, just saying, look, this is what's wrong, this is what I want you to do, and then let them work on it individually you're calling them out publicly you're calling out a whole team effectively even the ones that are trying their best like maybe i just know kepa alonso uh kovakovic you know um even a doy uh, you know he only got 13 minutes on the on, on the pitch so i do worry for him as well who might be uh, going to buy munich and i hope to god that he don't i think we've offered him seventy thousand per week and he's turned that down so i just don't know i think hazard is not really interested in these problems i think he's been he's done everything at chelsea at this point and he might not want to stick around and i won't blame him he's waiting for a call from real madrid to go and pay 100 million for him or whatever it is and uh, he goes there and moves on and plays in a world-class team and is in the champions league every single year we have you know we're trying to get into uh, the champions league uh, at the beginning, I was hoping we'd win the league um, the way it was going. I think we was 11 matches unbeating, etc., etc., and playing good football, and it just petered out, and it hasn't gone nowhere. You can blame this on the striker situation, and I can't, but at the same time, when we've got some strikers available and we're not playing them in their position, whatever. Having said that, uh, calling out the players, um, I, I don't think it's going to go too well. I think that uh, they're just going to get pissy at him. They're not going to play for him anymore. And essentially, it, things will just get worse. And then they will, uh, Chelsea will replace the manager because they're not going to pay, uh, replace 10 players or 5 players or 3 players worth 80 to 150 million and getting some new ones because you don't like them. They're happy to bring people in, but I don't think they're going to just out, out and out say, well, you disagree with this player. We're just going to sell him, especially if he's one of the top people in, in regards to Kante, uh, in regards to, I don't know, Ke Kepa, who's just paid 75 million or uh you know hazard or whatever i just don't see that happening um <clears throat> we just let go of fabregas which i think was a big big mistake he's a lot more better than Jorginho, uh more physical more experienced he shoots as well he he's, he's just a better player all around and he's still a golden boy in my opinion and sh uh, should be uh playing ahead of Jorginho. and uh Jorginho just 
oh, it just isn't good enough for me at this point. I don't know if it's for league or he just needs a year, but it's essentially it isn't working out for him and we need Kante back in that position. Um, sorry, guys, I'm going on a bit of rant. I had some other points as well, so do forgive me. It's a, a rambling video. I won't even deny that. So anyway, my thoughts overall, I don't, at this point, uh, it is just one game that we've had. Uh, hopefully we turn it around and do better. But if we don't, I kind of got the feeling, all the sense, that Sarri will not make it to the end of the season. I have that feeling. Now, here's a plot twist for you. and his, This is just a random thing I'm thinking. But wouldn't it be amazing? I don't know. I wouldn't say I want this, but I could see it happening. And that is Sarri gets fired. Sorry, whatever, gets fired. And they pay him off, obviously, whatever his contract is. So now we're left without a manager. So what are you going to do? You're going to go and look for a new manager, but you'll have to negotiate if he's already in a current job. You're going to have to pay millions to get him out. But then you might look to someone who's out of work. Can't really think of too many managers off the top of my head who are out of work, who Chelsea would be safe to say, we need this from you. Let's go do it, etc., etc. We have Rafa Benitez, um, Avram Grant. I don't know what he's doing, but I don't think he'll come back. I'm not too sure. But what I could see in, a, in an epic plot twist or whatever um, is the man we've had at the beginning, at the beginning of this revolution, this Russian revolution, and that is Jose Mourinho. Out of work, a couple of months, maybe he wants a break, had a one or two months break, maybe, I don't know. If we left on a, on a, on a you know, uh, the relationship was a good one because Roman Abramovich essentially owed Jose money uh, in his contract. And essentially, it was a big contract, and he was well, like, just a year or two into it, out in a four-year contract or something like that, and he was owed 50 million. At this point, Jose Mourinho said, no, take that 50 million, I've got enough money, and reinvest that back into Chelsea. Now, when you've got a man like that who's willing to say, keep your 50 million pounds uh, and reinvest it in your own team, that's a pretty good guy uh, right there. So, on those terms... Could you see Jose Mourinho effectively signing a contract for a year and, and a bit, or maybe even a two-year contract, or just till the end of the season, where he stabilises Chelsea, parks the bus, and, and Roman won't say win the league, because that ain't going to happen. He'll just say, try and win a cup. If you can't do that, get us in the top four for that Champions League football just till the end of the season. Could you imagine that? That would be a plot twist, where Jose returns to uh, Stamford Bridge, uh, stabilises the ship, Get some. We won't be playing good football. I don't think we'll be playing good football. We'll be parking the bus and everything, effectively getting results, grinding them out, just till the end of the season, uh, and then see if he wants to stay on for a year or two, or maybe it just be a one-time thing till the end of the season, and they bring somebody totally new in. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I know I'm going to have thoughts uh, over this after this video is done and dusted. I know I will. Uh, I've got to do a few for simulation with Tottenham versus Chelsea in the cup. I'm praying to God that we. We slaughter them in that. And maybe, I'm hoping to God, there is a reaction. A positive reaction. Of course, uh, Felipe Scolari called out the players. Didn't work for him. Uh, AVB did the same thing. It didn't work for him. So, these uh, core players of Chelsea squad have had a track record of surviving all these situations and, and coming out, staying at the club, and the manager going heads rolling in that respect. And, of course, getting rid of one man is a hell of a lot easier than getting rid of of an entire team it is what it is anyway guys this is just my reaction and to the news that he's calling out the players and you know saying that their mentality isn't good oh yes that's another thing he was uh saying that the mentality wasn't good and it was a team that was hard to motivate you shouldn't have to try very hard to motivate a team in a derby in a, in a game against arsenal you really shouldn't have um maybe it's a cultural thing uh, i just don't know I, I can't fathom that uh, at the end of the day. The, the players should be up for that every single week. So like I said, I think there's some decisions going on there. And that's what's going against it, regardless if it's a derby or not. Or maybe they're all thinking about the cup game and that's where they want to play primarily. So they're wondering why they're playing against Arsenal. I just don't know. I hope to God there's a positive reaction in the, in the Tottenham game. We'll get through to the final. And then uh, we, I want that cup at least. Uh, I would say this, no matter what happens, I want the Champions League, but if we don't get that, if we get a cup, that would be a bit of a success. And what happens with Sarri happens uh, if he goes or whatever uh, at the end of the day. It's not my money they're spending, it's Roman's. Um, and, and I just have to sit back and wait as a Chelsea fan and uh, uh, trust in Roman at the end of the day. Anyway, guys, uh, please like, share, comment and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Links will be in the description below. If you want to donate to me via PayPal or whatever, or buy a T-shirt, merchandise, it's in the link in the description below. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.